Matthew 18, okay, Matthew 18 verses 1 through 5, and he said, truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of God. Uh, God challenges us to be full-grown people, so how do we differentiate these differences? Okay, so Prabhakar, see, here we, um, we're talking about childlike, okay? So childlike is a believing heart. It's a trusting heart. But childish, on the other hand, that has to, when we say childish, usually that's negative, right? Don't be childish. That has to do with immaturity, selfishness, and things like that. So uh, it's you get the you get the difference here, right? So child childlike uh, is to do with spiritual maturity and it's positive, but childish is something that we don't want. So God challenges us to be full-grown people, but yes, even if we are full-grown adults, we can have a childlike or a believing heart. So it's not contradictory in any way. I hope that uh, clarifies, Prabhakar. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yes. Okay, and uh, Beth shares maybe because we keep getting dirty. Yeah. Yeah. So that is there, Beth. We do keep getting dirty. Uh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, we'll we'll come back to that uh, answer later. Okay, and Samuel, child like to be evil but spiritually mature. No, child like is more positive, Samuel. Yeah, and I think I just explained it earlier. Yeah. So childish. Okay, yes. Yeah, childish is to be uh, immature. Okay, all right. Uh, so yes, if we are through with that subject, uh, we're good to move on to the next one here. Yes. So the next uh, topic that we are going to deal with It's about uh, building people by the spirit, okay? So when we talk about kingdom building, I think uh, very briefly, we touched on it earlier. We are talking about building people and not necessarily building an organization or a structure of some sort. So we will uh, look in detail about how we can actually impact the lives of people and that is what kingdom building is all about so in second corinthians chapter 3 and verse 3 and i am on page 63 paul writes clearly you are an epistle of christ ministered by us written not with ink but by the spirit of the living god not on tablets of stone but on tablets of flesh that is of the heart so he is speaking to the corinthians and he says that you are the epistle of Christ or the people, the Corinthian people, they are the letter. Okay, uh, they, they are the work that Paul has accomplished. So, you know, it, it's interesting. He says that the work is not, you know, some, uh, some accomplishment which is far away from the people in whom he has served all these years. So he says that the people are the letter ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the spirit. So how did he build the people? He built the people by the spirit of God. Okay. And where did he work? He worked on the hearts of the people. So now we have to understand that kingdom building is about building people and we build them or in other words, their heart, over here, heart is used. So we're building them, building their heart with what? With the spirit. And that is true kingdom building. You know, if we don't do it in this way, then it's not really impacting the 
individual. So we have to work by the Spirit as the Holy Spirit leads us. You know, we, we are uh, serving the people and we are making that spiritual impact. You know, everything else that we try to do just through programs or you know, just through events or conferences and some organizational methods that may not bring the spiritual impact which we are looking for because kingdom building is about building people impacting people it has to be done by the the enabling of the holy spirit and so we write on their very hearts and we must remember that and you know paul in other passages you know he uses things like terms like mm, you are God's field. Okay, you are God's building. First Corinthians three nine, and he's referring to the people. So, the mission field is the, the people. Okay, it's not some project that he is referring to. So, uh, Paul is quite clear. You know, who he is or what is he working on? He's working on the hearts of the people by the empowering of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, even in uh, the passage, 1 Corinthians 9, 1, uh, he says, are you not my work in the Lord? Are you not? So the people, you're looking at the individual. Now, it's, uh, as you consider the life of Paul, the apostle, you know, we can ask the question, why didn't he, uh, while talking about his work and his accomplishments, why didn't he point to the missionary journeys? Why, did, why didn't he point to the number of churches that he had planted? You know, why didn't he point to the letters, the epistles that he had written? Okay, so he had so many uh, things to look at and say, this is my work. God, this is my work. But he's saying that the people, you know, they are the work that he has invested in all these years and so he's looking at uh, you know different ones and particularly the Corinthian church he speaks like that you are my field you are the building you know are you are you not my work in the Lord so at the end of the day you know it's people when we look at people whom we have served over the years you know, they are the work of God and this work was not done just by us we cannot do it with our natural abilities but by the spirit by the power of the spirit you know god gives us an opportunity to write on the tablets of people's hearts and it makes a spiritual impact on their lives and that is true kingdom building when we are building people up uh, for the glory of god now even the apostle peter he writes uh, in first peter 2 5 to the believers he says you also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house so he also understood we are working on the house of god the kingdom of god the church of the lord jesus christ but what are the bricks that we are using to build this house or this kingdom people and that is why he says you are living stones so people are the building block of the kingdom and what is the difference between you know a normal regular um, stone and you know a living stone the thing is living stones you know uh, they have feelings so it's not easy if you just want to build a building take bricks put it in its place you know use cement just stick it all together it's a lot easier to work with dead stones but it's not easy to work with living stones living stones have feelings okay uh, living stones grow so they have uh, a journey to make they have a progress to make and you know uh, living stones have the capacity to move around so uh, we, they will not just stay put in the place where we you know, suggest for them so this is all the, it's not going to be easy to work with living stones to build the kingdom of god but yet you know we have to understand that we are here uh, working with people who are the components of the house of god or the kingdom of god so kingdom building is about building people and not just about you know I, we could come up with a like a resume and you know uh, 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 full details about what we have accomplished in our ministry you know, i i release so many albums uh, i uh, uh, you know preach so many sermons but you know actually none of that would matter because ultimately 
what is the work that those sermons or those albums have done in the hearts of people but that is more important so kingdom building is about building people okay so anyone who calls himself or herself a kingdom builder must have people in their hearts and that is the example which we see the apostles uh, setting before us they carry people in their heart so the paul writes first corinthians 7:3 he writes i do not say this to condemn for i have said before that you are in our hearts you are in our hearts so he was carrying the people and why did he labor so abundantly he labored he 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 says you know the love of god it compels compels it constrains me you know i do everything for you so he had people in his heart and he valued and treasured people he wanted to see them grow in the lord you know make that spiritual journey of maturity and that is why you know, he wrote the epistles that he wrote he made the missionary journeys that he did and so on and so forth so for us we must carry god's people in our hearts and again you know paul writes to the thessalonians he talks about the people he says you are our glory and joy so again it's not you know some work on the table one book on the table which we wrote no but it's the people the transformation that the person has experienced you are our glory you are our joy so when we look at the people and how they have matured in god it makes us proud that wow god's word has worked in this person's life and you know uh, this is this is the work of god that he had called us to so for a kingdom builder we must have people in our hearts now suppose we say okay i don't want to work you know it's like work from home i i can sign up for work from home just don't tell me to interact with people okay uh, and i'll build the kingdom of god well you know what permanently this kind of work from home situation can't happen in the case of a kingdom builder people are a part of it okay basically what my it wasn't funny i was trying to crack a joke basically i was trying to say minimize human interaction okay but that cannot um, human beings are a part of kingdom building we cannot subtract human beings from uh, the work that god has called us to do for the kingdom of god so uh, we must have anyone who says okay even if it doesn't involve interaction with people definitely whatever we do let's say okay we are doing some media work some graphic work and that's going out you know for church but it's impacting a soul it's impacting somebody's life so we are making an impact even if we don't interact with human being so everything that we do anything and everything that we do in the kingdom of god has to do with people and every kingdom builder must have people in their hearts and uh, trust that it will build up people in some way it will draw people closer to god in some way mature them in the lord in some way so what is the right way of building people up okay the right way is to build them up by the spirit and you know we have seen that you know, paul said that that uh, you know by by the spirit uh, he had built up the corinthian church okay so um what is the spirit now john chapter 6 verse 63 jesus said that it is the spirit who gives life and the flesh profits nothing the words that i speak to you are spirit and they are life so you know the the content that we use it has to be from the word it has to be led by the spirit so then the spirit is able to do he is able to do his work in the hearts and the lives of the people so that's what we are saying we are saying that it must be led by god it must be um, you know from the word of god and that is the only thing which is able to build people up now on the contrary remember when we talked about the god given vision we also said if we are led by the flesh that cannot produce the will of god or the fruit the lasting fruit that the father is looking for and similarly here again in our labor if what we are doing is from the flesh the spirit has nothing to do with it okay. so um yeah we must be careful
Okay, sorry everyone, my internet uh, connection dropped. So yeah, reconnecting. I, I don't know where, till where you all heard. Uh, so I was saying that, uh, you know, we can only build up by the spirit and not through our, uh, you know, if we depend on carnal, if we depend on our flesh or carnal methods to build up the lives of the people. So in kingdom building, uh, we have to depend on the resources of God to impact people spiritually. And in kingdom building, we must realize that, you know, it's such a precious work. Uh, it's, it's sort of, uh, uh, it's, it's honorable and uh, uh, it causes a reverential fear in us to just think that, oh man, you know, I have to serve in the kingdom of God uh, and God is calling me to do something is so precious. Uh, but then, you know, uh, we can have questions within ourselves and, and, and say that I'm not perfect. How is it that God can ask me to serve in his kingdom? You know, but the beautiful thing about God's kingdom is that God uses imperfect people to perfect imperfect people. Okay. So we're all making that journey of maturity. We're all, uh, you know, moving forward uh, to become more like Jesus or everything that we learned about spiritual maturity, you know, that's happening in our lives. But, you know, the beauty of it is none of us is perfect. You know, even, even the ones ministering, they're not perfect. And yet you know, God is able to use imperfect people to perfect imperfect people. And that is what is happening in the kingdom of God. Uh, and that is the process of kingdom building. So now we'll look at some practical keys uh, of building people by the spirit. So how do we do it right? The first thing is to recognize the purpose of individuals because we want to build people, right? Kingdom building is to build people. So how do we build them? We have to recognize their God-given potential. So that can be discerned by the spirit. So we recognize, okay, what is the uh, purpose? What is the position or the place where this individual must be, uh, you know, what is that position that must be allocated to this person? Because then the growth will come. Now, we know as uh, people in the body of Christ, God has set each member Okay, uh, each one of them as he has pleased. That's what First Corinthians 12, 18 says. That means that everyone has a calling, everyone has a position. As a kingdom builder, we have to discern the God-appointed function of individuals and help them, you know, move in that direction. So that will enable them to kind of, you know, grow from there, uh, become better in using their grace, in using their gift, in releasing that anointing, uh, you know, so on and so forth. So recognize the potential. I think we've touched on this earlier. It's not what we want them to do, but it's more like what has God called them to do and then position them in that place and lead them in that direction. And that will really build up an individual. So is it possible to recognize one's character before uh, they have come to full maturity? Yes, it is. We can recognize by the Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus did that in the case of Peter. He looked at Peter at the very beginning. In John chapter 1, you know, he sees Peter and he says that, you know, you uh, are Cephas, you are a stone. Or he was prophesying and he was speaking the destiny of Peter even before he started on his uh, ministry journey. So it's possible. So that's why we must be very prayerful as we interact with people and call them to uh, certain responsibilities. So recognize their uh, calling and position them. You know, Nathaniel is another example where Jesus looked at this man uh, and just by looking at that man by the spirit, he said, you know, here is uh, an Israelite in whom, in whom there is no guile. Okay, how is it possible for Jesus to discern, you know, what kind of an attitude this person carries, you know, by the Holy Spirit. So we depend on the Holy Spirit to recognize uh, people's potential and we guide them. Okay. Uh, and as we do that, you know, they, they will begin to release their potential. So positioning them um, is very, very important. 
yeah so uh, in the case of uh, moses god instructed you know god instructed him when he was to complete his term you know god showed him joshua and he told moses that you know you must pick joshua encourage him for he shall cause israel to inherit it so it was moses's responsibility to position joshua you know to be the successor to lead god's people in the future and also the new testament you know we see that barnabas he went seeking saul i'm sure god would have impressed it on barnabas's heart uh, that here is you know an apostle in the making or here is an apostle who is emerging you need to make that connection and you know bring him uh, onto the scene and so barnabas positions saul okay he brings him to the church of antioch he's part of the teaching team there and then you know things begin to unfold in his life so uh, we must recognize and position people where uh, it is best suited for them as led by the holy spirit now uh, at all times it may not be easy to discern one's potential you know sometimes it's easy we position some people and it works beautifully you know they take off from there but then in in some other cases it can be challenging so an example which is given in our notes is that of john mark okay john mark uh, is um, uh, 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 an individual who was assisting paul and barnabas early on in their missionary journey but you know at some point in the initial stages itself john mark goes back home and knowing paul's uh, zeal and passion for the ministry paul is very upset he's like what kind of a what kind of a minister is he you know he's wanting to take a break uh, so he's not happy with john mark anymore and as he continues with the journey he uh, has an argument with barnabas and they they become so um, angry with each other that you know it's a sharp dispute and they part ways so they had such a bad argument about john mark and they went their separate ways but you know later on you know in colossians uh, paul writes he says uh, aristarchus my fellow prisoner greets you with mark the cousin of barnabas uh, about whom you received instructions if he comes to you welcome him so paul had a change of heart in the beginning he made a wrong calculation maybe personality he didn't like you know a laid back attitude in ministry and maybe he he thought that look at john mark you know he's not useful he's so laid back but he recognized later on that no john mark is useful for the work of the ministry so later he starts to affirm and commend john mark and he includes him in the ministry so in this passage he's telling the people welcome him and to timothy when he writes to timothy in 1 timothy 4:11 he says only luke is with me get mark and bring him with you for he is useful to me for my ministry okay so notice that there's a change of heart he could not recognize john mark's potential earlier but later he thinks that he is useful so point is sometimes we can tell sometimes you know it takes a while for us to identify people's potential but you know keep working at it because ultimately we are here to build people up then discover and develop their gifting so you know this is uh, um this is to say again that we have to move in the direction that god has for the people so when we look at people obviously god will give us the discernment that they are gifted in this area okay there is a certain gift upon their lives even paul when he spoke to timothy he encouraged him right in first timothy 4:14 he says do not neglect the gift that is in you so there was a gift in timothy and paul wanted timothy to exercise that gift fan that gift into flames so in the same way every individual that we work with God, according to god's purpose there is a gift so we must encourage them to uh, nurture hone that skill you know that gift that uh, anointing that god has put on their life now why are we saying this because as leaders we can we can err you know uh, in the way that we can make of people want we want them to become right so 
then what happens you know they struggle through the the opportunity which we give them and then we are trying to push them maybe somebody is not uh, not at all cut out for uh, pulpit ministry but if we keep pushing them what will happen you know over a period of time they will get discouraged they might even burn out and they might you know be so upset that they want to leave the ministry so it's not about making people who we think they should be but it's about just you know being a catalyst and allowing them to recognize the gift that god has put on their lives and grow in that direction so that's what paul did he told timothy there is a gift in you timothy and i want you to develop that gift stir up that gift don't neglect the gift and move in that direction right so we must recognize and allow people to grow then nurture life to life so basically that means that uh um we lead by example okay and we provide um instruction and support you know and we are there we are there for people uh, look at you know uh, paul he he says things like imitate me life to life so he gives timothy an example he gives the the churches that he was leading an example and he says you can be like me imitate me follow me right the way i follow christ so uh, we preach the greatest message through our lives and we invite people to follow okay and uh, when we do that what happens is you know people also understand that it's first important for us to do and then teach right or basically the point is uh, live by example lead by example and that kind of that kind of a mentoring or that kind of a nurturing leading people um is is very effective so that is a way in which we are also building people up then we ourselves are growing in god right we are getting god's revelation we are moving forward and as we are growing you know, we can lead people in Uh, the depth of that revelation or you know in the depth of that anointing because we have been there and it's a lot easier to lead people you know when when we have uh, been there done that than just being like the blind leading the blind so if i myself have not grown personally in those areas uh, it's very difficult for me to instruct and guide people so leading by example you know life to life uh, uh, impact nurture is very very important okay yes all right so uh, in leading people we'll just look at some other key things that we can uh, that will help us uh, but i'm looking at the comment here louis says uh, this issue with john mark was it a sign of burnout in ministry on the side of john mark uh, not necessarily louis because you know this is the first missionary journey that uh, uh, paul and barnabas set out on and they choose john mark for an assistant and as they are moving through uh, different cities he just decides to kind of stay back in his hometown i think he decides to go back to his hometown so we don't exactly know why he made that choice but he did which is what upset uh, paul and i don't think it's burnout because it was just the beginning of the journey yeah so uh, is that okay louis yeah and like we don't know the temperament of john mark right you know sometimes uh, we may say that it's not a burnout but knowing that person's personality maybe somebody needs uh, you know me time alone time to kind of refresh themselves uh, they may have felt the pressure of of even a little bit of ministry uh, we don't know we don't know his personality so anyway but uh, from what we see it was not like too much ministry had happened you know before he took a break so uh, that is the observation okay moving on to building people so we are saying that be led by god according to what god is calling them to do lead them by example and then some other you know practical things i'll touch on avoid insecurities you know, we've been saying this you know insecurities which we have within ourselves as leaders right so they push us to 
to to kind of uh, interact with people in unhealthy ways so what happens you know we might get over involved or we might uh, become very authoritative dictatorial jealous of people you know trying to control manipulate uh, you know trying to do things from the background and people are not understand so and people will wonder what why is this individual behaving like this why is the leader behaving like this personal insecurities which that person has not dealt with over time so we must guard ourselves against insecurities jealousy you know we've touched on this as well earlier uh, the classic example is saul and david you know saul was so jealous of david that you know it kind of builds envy builds right initially he just wants to harm him and then he wants to kill him so it's just getting bad so uh, avoid that avoid jealousy uh, avoid being over protect protective and being controlling now it is good to be zealous for god's people paul was zealous you know he he was zealous for uh, every church that he had planted and you know he used to say things like i have betrothed you to one husband or the church he is saying that you know uh, like like a bride uh, like a friend of the bridegroom i i am the one responsible to entrust you to christ so you know i can't let you be deceived whatever i've taught till now uh, you know i want you to stay in those things don't get deceived by false teachings and also he's acting very protective about the church but at the same time you know paul also says things like not that we have dominion over your faith okay so you see uh, yes we are working with people we are imparting into their lives but they are also yielding to god they are cooperating they have a walk with the lord they are being obedient and that is why they are maturing now we cannot look at people and say oh, you are mature because of me you know i am teaching you god's word i am nurturing you i am leading you paul never did that he never tries to dominate over a person's faith and in fact he says not that we have dominion over your faith okay what you believe how you believe what your walk with the lord is you are responsible i cannot take you know credit for any of that i don't have any dominion over your faith okay so there is a it's it's kind of you know there's a thin line he is zealous for the people to protect them but at the same time he's not over engaging over protective uh, right of the people he knows where the line ends and uh, you know how he must treat them as individuals uh, uh, you know of their own with a mind of their own so uh, as leaders same thing for us we must not be uh, try to be over protective or controlling of people and their walk with god yes yeah sure louis uh, yeah moving on uh, avoid over involvement okay so this basically means that uh, we empower and that's that's what it is you know when we speak the word when we teach we instruct uh, we empower and then we let the people take it up and run because then what happens you know they they become stronger as they are making their own decisions they become stronger as they are growing in god but you know if we are trying to get over involved meaning hand holding nurturing you know like like your kindergarten for everything pastor is there for everything pastor is pastor has to say something what happens you know they become dependent on us and they're not able to do anything without the leader and that's not true kingdom building we want to have people stand on their own two feet so leadership should be such that we give them the keys right we give them the reins and we say okay guys you know you you are good enough you can make a decision now you have what it takes right you have the word you have the wisdom uh, you have the skills you have the anointing go for it right so uh, over involvement must be avoided and we must equip people in such a way that if we are not on the scene for whatever reason right like in the early church we see that persecution happened they got scattered but they were empowered they started planting their own churches the believers right they did not have to um, sort of hang on to the apostles to lead them but when they were praying miracles were happening the believers themselves so it should be like that when we are building the kingdom of god empower people avoid over 
engaging, over involvement, also being over authoritative, right? Scriptures tell us that don't be lord over God's people. We are not supposed to do that. Okay. Uh, and, you know, uh, Paul also wrote to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 9 18. He said that I may not abuse my authority in the gospel. So he knew that the authority which is given, it, it is to build people up, not to kind of, you know, push them around and be a boss over God's people. So being overly authoritative is also not something that, you know, God wants from a leader. Uh, and then, you know, avoiding emotional attachments. So as we are building God's people, working with, uh, you know, um, the people that God puts into our lives, you know, maybe there, there comes a time when we have to release them, right? And if we are emotionally attached in an unhealthy way, see, we cannot, we are working with human beings. So to say that be completely like robotic, it doesn't work like that. So there is that level of uh, human interaction, okay, with all the boundaries that, that occurs. Uh, and at the same time, you know, being overly emotionally engaged, right? Uh, that is what we are saying that we must avoid because uh, if it comes time for, uh, you know, that brother or that sister that we have been building up over the years to move forward. God, you know, releases a prophetic word and they have to move on to higher things in the Lord. We should not become a stumbling block. We should not become that restraining, um, uh, you know, kind of a grip over that person, but we must be ready to let them go. Okay. Uh, all right. So I think think that I will pause here because the next section is more about bringing correction uh, and I think it'll be good for us to kind of take a little more time and uh, touch on it instead of just rushing through it. So, so far, whatever we have learned about building people up, any thoughts, any comments, you know, it'll be good for us to, to look at that and then we can move forward in the next section. So, so far, we've just took, looked at uh, the fact that we are building people, we must build people by the spirit and some practical keys, you know, that we must understand God's heart for the people, position them accordingly, and then, you know, uh, the way we lead them, by example, not authoritatively, uh, you know, instead, we, we lead them uh, as good stewards of what God has entrusted us with. So... Any any more um, comments from your side or anything from your life, uh, your experience of leading people that you want to share with the class? That would be wonderful. Okay. okay, so Louis says, uh, you just cleared the thin line between witchcraft and impartation in ministry. Okay, sure, sure, Louis. Um, and you will use the term witchcraft, which is quite heavy. Uh, but I think what you mean is manipulation, right? Spiritual manipulation. Yeah, it's true. It's true. So... We want to impart and build, but we don't want to be controlling. Yeah. See, again, even though this is a different chapter, I think the key is character and maturity. If character and maturity, if the wineskin is lacking, if there's no strength in the wineskin, then, you know, whatever we said, avoid this, avoid that, you know, it's easier said than done because these are deep-seated insecurities within us and they can start playing up, right? The moment you see somebody doing better than you, if I have not dealt, right? If I haven't matured in the Lord, in my trust in God and who I am in Christ, if I'm not secure in these things, I can try to play games to kind of, you know, uh, bring down the other person. So 
yeah for us to lead well i think what we talked in the previous chapter is very crucial to have the right attitudes okay seems to me like the kingdom truth is sinking in so there are no questions no comments whatsoever so i think i'll let the truth work in you for a while yeah and uh, we will uh, connect in the next class and take it forward so would like to request yeah yes i can hear someone first i have a question ah yes yes so, prabhakar please so based on the maturity man, the be wise like mm-hmm. serpent and innocent as dove so ah. how do we differentiate how do we understand this person okay be wise as serpents and innocent as doves so i think what it means is to mm, to be harmless right be harmless but at the same time be shrewd be shrewd uh, or be a good good steward bringing about profit and bringing about expansion increase having foresight okay so we are getting things done for the kingdom but not in a harmful violent way instead in a very harmless way we're not harming anybody but we are being shrewd for the sake of the kingdom so uh, does that make sense prabhakar uh, some more example please for the like okay okay be wise as serpents and innocent as doves Mm, see uh, what jesus was saying is he saying that the people of the world right they can they can um, they can be evil for them to to progress it's a very selfish kind of a progress that the world wants okay where they don't care if they walk on people but they they'll get what they want so that's not how a child of god should be a child of god can be harmless can be selfless or can be loving of people but at the same time we too can make progress better than um or at least if not better than at least as much as somebody out there in the world so you know uh, to to put it in a simple way we can have all the right attitudes and be very profitable in the world so that's what it means okay thank you yeah sure sure thank you right okay all right so uh, with that question we will wrap up i just like to request somebody to close with a word of prayer yeah it's open to anyone all right our prayer yes yes please Yes, our father and our god we want to thank you we want to give you all the glory we want to give you all the honor we want to give you all the adoration for the word that we've heard this morning this afternoon this evening we thank you for your servant that you, that you've used to speak the word of truth to us father we are praying that you will help us oh god not to be lead us to go who withhold your people look up from fulfilling the purpose by which you know you have brought them into this world we pray father that you will help us to go to see deeper truth to god and meaning of god to the gospel that we may not be an obstacle of god to the growth of your kingdom father we ask so god that the word that we've heard today will god let it not just be words of god that we hear but let it be words of god that will bring meaning to our christian race that will bring meaning to god to our ministry that will bring meaning to our lives we pray for us from this day henceforth your glory be revealed oh god in every life so god that's presented here today thank you ancient of days for this we pray to christ our lord jesus amen Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you Harrison. Yes, thank you everyone for joining. God bless you. Have a great week. Thank yeah. you. Ma'am. Thank you. Bye. Bye for now. Thank you Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. thank you. Bye everyone. Thank you ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. God bless. Thank you Pastor.
Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay, Louis, I saw that comment. Yeah, that's funny. Spiritual manipulation, foreign ministry version, witchcraft, African. <laughs> okay, okay, on the lighter note. Okay, all right. Okay, so bye for now. See you soon.